All right, hello and welcome everyone to another class in our Kitchen Gadget series. My name is Charlotte Schein and I'm one of the Giant Company Dietitians. Um, today we're going to focus on a really great and versatile tool, which is the air fryer. And which leads me to my first, first question before we get started. I would love to know, we'll do a poll question, if you are using an air fryer. And to be honest, I just purchased one within like the past year or so, um, but definitely they're becoming more popular um, the past couple of years. So let me do this poll question because I would like to know if everybody is using an air fryer or not. So you can go ahead and answer that question. We'll give everybody a couple seconds to answer that question. And so far it looks like about half and half. All right, so I'm going to end the poll and share the results. So it really looks like about pretty much half and half. So half of you um, are using an air fryer and know a little bit about it. And um, half of you, pretty much half of you have not used an air fryer, which myself, um, again, just within the past year, I've been starting to use one. Don't know why I didn't start using it sooner, but um, so that's interesting. So thanks everybody for participating with that question. All right. All right, so our agenda for today, we're going to be doing an air fryer true or false game, talking a little bit about, you know, what exactly is an air fryer. Probably everybody, um, for those of you who have not used one, obviously you have heard about an air fryer. Um, so we're going to talk about a little bit about an air fryer and how it works, foods to air fry and to not air fry, uh, things to consider before purchasing an air fryer, some potential drawbacks, um, savory recipes, which of course is um, a great thing to review, and then a cooking demo. So today we're going to be making an air fried Brussels sprouts, which Brussels sprouts is a great thing to make anyways because they're in season right now and taste delicious. They're one of my favorite vegetables, so always uh, I love this recipe. All right, so about, so we already answered this question, so about half of you have and half of you have not used an air fryer. So let's get to our air fryer, true or false. So true or false, air fryers use less oil than deep fryers. Oh, you put your answer in the chat. Sorry, I should have said that. All right, so we're a couple seconds to answer that question. So a lot of you are saying true. All right, so let's see what the answer is. So this is... True. So a lot of you have uh, got, that, got that question um, correct. So air fryers use a lot less oil, so a lot less fat um, than our than when we are deep frying foods. So good job, everybody, for those who answered that one correct. So the next one, true or false, air fryers make a product with less calories and fat. So true or false, and you can put your answer in the chat. Looks like a lot of a lot of you are answering true. I saw a couple of falses. So let's see, let's see what the answer is. So this one is true. So air fryers I definitely make a great product with less calories and fat, mostly because we're not, you know, we don't have to use a lot of oil or you know um, have to use oil at all. So definitely making a product with less calories and fat. So for weight management or for heart health, um, definitely. Definitely a great tool to use uh, for preparing foods. And our last questions, air fryers cook food at a slow rate, true or false? And you can put your answer in the chat. Let's see what everybody's saying. So I have a couple of trues, a lot of you are saying false. Everybody a couple more seconds. All right, let's see what the answer is. So this is false. And so what air fryers do is they really work rapidly and evenly to help circulate that hot air around food. So it definitely works at a really, um, a really fast rate, cooking foods quickly, which is of course um, really nice, especially on busy nights. So thanks everybody for participating with that true or false game. All right, so let's talk about a little bit of what is an air fryer. So an air fryer is a countertop appliance. So I have mine right here. 
So what it does is it circulates hot air to cook a variety of different foods. Um, and we'll review this in an upcoming slide. But it can, um, it can, like not all foods can go in here, kind of like with deep frying, but, but uh, a lot of foods can. So the heating element is at the top and it's paired with a fan to help, to help heat, um, to help heat it and circulate the air throughout. So most times with an air fryer, they're getting to about 350 to 400 degrees. Of course, you can go a little bit hotter as well. So it doesn't necessarily fry foods like a deep fryer, um, but it does give a crispy texture without drying out the center. So the heating element is air and not fat like a deep fryer. So air fryers usually have the following components. Um, so it has a, as you can see here, a drawer, in case these are not, a drawer and a basket. Um, so this is where the food goes. And I'm gonna pull this out. So I already made some Brussels sprouts already in it, so it's a little bit messy, but you can see it has a perforated um, basket. So what this helps to do is it helps to circulate the air evenly, which is important for cooking. So it has a heating element, has a fan at the top, which we talked about, and then the um, also has an air inlet and outlet openings. Um, so there's an outlet opening in the back. And the one thing to keep in mind when you are using it is it really needs to be about five inches from the wall or else it can, um, with all the heat and everything, it can damage the wall. So that's something to keep in mind. And it also, um, so I'll, I'll push mine in a little bit, but it also has um, your temperature and timer settings. And we'll, there's another image coming up, but a lot of these already have images. Um, so for instance, you could press on like a chicken drumstick or a pizza icon and, it already presets the um, temperature and time, but sometimes you can, you might not want that temperature or time, so you can manually put in what you would like. There are rack varieties of air fryers, uh, which are really nice, and this helps to achieve a crisp coating on foods like chicken drumsticks or steak and fish. So depending on what type of food that you are air frying, um, might depend on what device that you get or what air fryer that you get. But it is a great appliance for cooking in small batches. Um, but again, there's many different types of air fryers with different sizes. Okay, and again, going off of what is an air fryer, so the benefits, it doesn't heat up the kitchen. So we know that when we um, turn on our oven, can heat up the kitchen. So this definitely doesn't do that. So especially on summer days, it's a really nice appliance to use. It preheats really quickly and starts cooking food right away. I would say probably within even like 10 or 20 seconds, I can really feel the heat coming out of this thing. Um, so it starts to cook foods right away, allows for a versatile, fast and easy meals, which is really, really nice. And what's even nice, so we talked about, um, so you don't have to use oil or very little oil. So you really get that juicy texture on the inside so it doesn't dry it out, but a really nice crisp texture on the outside. And again, with all, without all the calories and fat of deep frying, which is really nice. And it is an easier cleanup than deep frying. Sometimes deep frying, the, the fat can go everywhere and it can create quite a mess. Um, so that's, so it's a nice easier cleanup. So these are growing in popularity, which probably everybody already knows. So these first appeared probably on the market about a decade ago, but starting, and I thought this was an interesting statistic. So from January, 2020, so right before COVID to December, 2021, there was around 25 million sold. So this was about a 76% increase from two years prior. So probably, especially during COVID when we're at home, we're more likely to, you know, play around with it. And, you know, well, first of all, we were cooking more, um, you know, at home during COVID, but a lot more time to kind of figure out, figure out the air fryer. But I thought that was an interesting statistic. So definitely a huge increase and um, even more so now from 2021. Uh, so definitely, definitely still very popular. And someone asked the question, can you recommend a good cookbook for cooking with an air fryer? So that's a really good question. And actually would, um, so normally when you purchase an air fryer, this one is a, um, the Vortex variety, but this actually came with a cookbook um, and it had a really great variety of different recipes. Um, so definitely, but, but really I think any type of cookbook or air fryer cookbook, um, and even if you wanna look um, for recipes on the internet, there's a variety to look for too, even with our savory database. Um, but that's a good question, but you know, normally these, come with like a little, or at least some type of cookbook or recipes in it. But I still have, uh, I don't have an exact cookbook to recommend. 
uh, but a lot of different recipes out there. Okay, so how does an air fryer work? Um, so for this one, so this one has a power button right here. So obviously you wanna click on the power button, you're going to choose your temperature and time. And I should say this image on the right-hand side. So these are all the icons that are on my air fryer. So this came um, with the instruction or came out of the instruction manual. So I thought this was a great picture, but you can either choose your temperature or time. You can manually put it in or choose one of these images and it will um, already preset everything to this temp to that temperature and that time, um, which is really nice. But what I found with an air fryer is um, you may have to adjust the temperature and cooking time depending on how much you want it cooked or maybe not cooked as much. So it's really a trial and error, I think, um, with this. So so very simple, very simple to use, not too many steps, and cooks quickly. All right, so I thought, let's see. Oh, and there's somebody who recommended uh, so cookbooks so in the chat. Oh yeah, so, and then somebody else said they find most of their air fry recipes on TikTok and Facebook, which I do too. So that's also great resources. So some, here are some foods to air fry. This of course is not all the foods that you can air fry, but ones that are popular. So of course, chicken, fish, tofu is a great one. You can even make eggs, which I have not done um, in my air fryer, but there is an icon to make eggs in this. You can do um, air fried food, or not yeah, fruit, bananas, apple, peaches, uh, to name a few. Vegetables are a really great thing you can air fry. So broccoli, cauliflower, zucchini, sweet potatoes, especially if you're making sweet potato fries, is a really good one to make um, in the air fryer. So you can do beans and even hamburgers or pizza. Um, you can dehydrate stuff in here and also reheat it as well. So a lot of different options to do in the air fryer and a lot of different types of foods as well. So here are some foods not to air fry. Um, so again, we're talking about a deep fryer. Um, you, you normally, everybody thinks you can just kind of throw everything in there if you want to deep fry it, but not so much in this air fryer. So foods like saucy foods or wet batter, um, the problem with that is they can be blown around in there and stick to heating element or behind the fan. Um, so this can lead to a fire, a cheese by itself, um, or cheesy foods such as mac and cheese or scalloped potatoes, that will get stuck in there. And then um, if you want to put in a large whole chicken, uh, that's not always a good thing to do because it might not be big enough. So there's a risk of not having it not cooked properly. Uh, popcorn, so the kernels will blow around causing damage. And then leafy green vegetables like spinach, bok choy, Swiss chard, and kale. Um, so the speed of the air can cause them to cook unevenly and burn, which is not always good, but you can coat it in oil to weigh it down a little bit um, to have it cook. Okay. And then some things to consider before purchasing an air fryer. So of course the price, um, you wanna purchase an air fryer that fits your budget. So the price ranges from about $50 to around like $350, this one was 80. Um, the capacity and size is something to take into consideration. So the amount of food an air fryer can hold varies. Consider the amount of people you usually cook for and then the counter space um, and storage as well. And again, it's really a trial and error. So you might, you might just have to purchase one and see how you like it, which I know can be, can be expensive too, but I just have to do that. Okay, and some potential drawbacks. So of course the costs, and they can be costly, um, noise level. So it can be somewhat loud as a microwave, but really not like a vacuum space. Again, the countertop space in your storage, cooking for large groups. Sometimes if you're cooking for, you know, this instrument is not for a huge catering event. And then foods that are air fried don't exactly have the same sensory characteristics as deep fried. So air fried food, Tastes more like foods that are oven baked, but still have that crispy texture on the outside. So here are some air fryer recipes and let me just check the chat. I saw someone had said that they never thought to use tofu. We had someone tried to use a grilled cheese. So grilled cheese is another food that's recommended that you don't really put in there. 
um, just because it's not, it's just not a good thing to put in there with the cheese melting. And someone said, I just started using the air fryer paper liners and to place tomatoes and mozzarella cheese on top turned out great. So that's another, it's a great one. Okay, so these are some of my um, air fryer recipes from Savory. So Savory is our magazine um, and you can go online to our Savory online recipe database for all of these recipes. So these are some air fryer recipes. So the first one, so we talked about fish is a great one uh, to utilize in the air fryer. So this is an air fryer crispy fish sandwich. Um, so not too complicated. So we have our frozen haddock fillets, some flour egg and panko breadcrumbs and cooking spray. And then of course you can top it with um, these other things, but it's a good source of fiber. So seven grams of fiber, 32 grams of protein and gets one guiding star. So we know that guiding stars is our nutritional navigation program. So the more stars that you have, the more nutritionally beneficial it is. So this gets one star. So definitely a good option for a lunch or, or a dinner meal. Um, but it still gives that crispy, um, you know, kind of like a fried fish sandwich texture. Um, so definitely an option. And if you look at the fat, make sure that, yeah. So seven grams of fat um, and then two grams of saturated fat. So if you're looking more at like a really true deep fried crispy fish sandwich, it's going to have a lot more fat than that, especially when it comes to saturated fat. So we know when our diet has a lot of saturated fat in it, um, it's not, you know, not good for a lot of reasons, but especially with um, heart health as well. So, so definitely a good recipe. Another one. Um, so I still have yet to try this one, but this looks really good. So this is an air fried banana split. So especially if you're really craving something sweet, this is a great one. Um, it gets two guiding stars. So you would just put on your banana, peanut butter, walnuts, chocolate chips, and you would put it in, um, put in the air fryer for about five minutes. I forget the exact temperature, um, but, and then you would take it out, you put a little bit of Greek yogurt on it. So this has four grams of fiber and then five grams of protein. Um, but definitely if you're craving something sweet, this is a great recipe. And again, gets two guiding stars. So someone talked about, they didn't know that you could uh, put tofu in the air fryer, but it's a great one. Great one to put in the air fryer. So this is an air fried crispy tofu with, with rainbow slaw. Um, so this has tofu, orange, low sodium soy sauce, rice vinegar, sesame oil. And then with your rainbow slaw, you can add in um, some other ingredients, but good source of fiber and protein um, and, and a great way to get in tofu if you do like that. And it does get one guiding star. And I didn't really, I've never made beans in the air fryer either, but this one I would really like, because I definitely like legumes in general. So this is just a um, can of lima beans, some olive oil, lemon pepper Caesar, seasoning and garlic powder, and you would air fry it. This would be a great snack and it would give that really crispy um, or crunch, I should say, uh, for the bean. So this recipe gets one guiding star and you can put your answer in the chat too. For those of you who have used an air fryer, have you, um, done any type of bean. I'm just curious because um, I definitely have not, but this, I know I would really like this. Let's see. So some of you had said no. Okay. Um, so I think, yeah, but again, I think this would make a great, a great snack and give like a great crunch. And I know in the store we have already kind of pre-made, you know, like crunchy um, beans like this with seasoning flavor, but if you want to make it at home, an air fryer is a great Great tool to utilize for that. All right, so let me look in the chat really quick before we do our meal prep demo. And you can answer this. Oh, someone, wait, let me see. Well, someone said they've only done chickpeas. That'd be a good one. Okay, so someone asked the best brand. Um, so I don't know exactly what the best best brand is. I really like this Vortex uh, variety, but honestly, this is the only brand that I really have used. I think depending on what foods that you're going to make in the air fryer will be uh, depend on if you get like a rack variety air fryer or this type of um, <laughs> this type of basket air fryer. Um, so I can't really recommend a certain brand, but I think there's so many different great varieties out there. So I definitely I think anyone that you get will do a good job. Well, and someone said they like their Ninja, Ninja 3-in-1. I've heard that's a good one as well. But that's a good question about the brand. 
Okay, let me stop sharing my screen and we'll do the meal, meal prep demo. Okay, so I have my Brussels sprouts here. So what I picked up in the store, so this recipe calls for two 12 ounce bag of Brussels sprouts. Um, I did already pre-wash these. Um, so it calls for two bags. So I have already done in my air fryer, the one bag, um, just because it takes about, you know, 10 or 15 minutes in here. Um, so I did the one bag, but I just picked up, again, these fresh cut, our brand Brussels sprouts and pre-wash them. Um, it's nice that they're already, it's already portioned out to 12 ounces. Um, but again, Brussels sprouts are in season right now. One of my favorite vegetables. Um, and especially when you are um, frying it, or even if you're putting it in the oven and it gets kind of like that browning on, it makes it super um, sweet and good. And a lot of different things you can do with Brussels sprouts. Okay, so to start out, um, and I'll, I'll actually, let me cut up my Brussels sprouts first. So to air fry these, I'm just cutting these in half. And the only thing we're doing really, um, before we put this in the air fryer, we're just cutting it up and then we're just gonna put some olive oil on it. You can put a little bit of salt and pepper if you would like on it. Um, I'm just gonna do the olive, olive oil. But again, this is pretty easy. I'm just, just cutting them in half, even if some are bigger than others. And so normally what I'll do for this recipe then, um, the temperature setting, they want 375, 375 for 20 minutes. So with this recipe, I've done it before and it really gives a great, um, a great product, even just after about 10 or 15 minutes at 375. And I think that's because this Vortex variety just really gives a good heat. Um, it just heats up really fast, so you don't need as much, as much time. So I'm almost done cutting these up in half. And again, I'm just using a 12 ounce, um, 12 ounce bag of our, just our brand Brussels sprouts. And I did pre-wash these as well as kind of pack them dry because sometimes if their water's left on them and then you put oil on them, it doesn't always give the best, uh, best final product. So I did pack these dry. All right, so I have all of these um, cut up. I just cut them in half. I'm going to bring over my bowl. I'll go ahead and put these, these in my bowl and then, and then I'm going to add two tablespoons of olive oil. And I don't necessarily measure it, I just kind of eye it. You just want just enough so it coats. Or yeah, um, there's a nice coat on everything. I'm just stirring this up. So someone asked, um, do you remove the loose leaves? You can, you don't necessarily have to. Although now that I say that when I did do that, um, the first bag before class, if there are loose leaves, they do get, um, can get a little bit uh, brown and black. So, so you definitely can kind of take those off because they might just get black anyways. All right, so it looks like everything is coated here. So again, if you want to add some salt and pepper before putting it in here, you can. Um, and I will, so this so takes about 10 or 15 minutes. So I'll just show you how I start it. I won't cook it the whole way just because it can be um, a little bit loud. Again, sort of like a microwave loud, not so much like a vacuum loud. Um, so I'll just show you how to start this and then I'll turn it back off. So I'm just going to put this in my basket. Um, and again, there's holes in it, which is really nice in this basket because that will help, see here, that will help the air to circulate and really help with a even cooking. So when I push this in, my power button is right here. So I'm gonna press that and then do my temperature and then time. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention too. So normally, and so with some of these, it will give you an alert to shake it up. Um, so, so like if I put this on for 10 minutes, it will stop at five minutes beep and it'll say shake. So you shake the basket. 
um, and then you put it back in and it will cook for another five minutes. And the reason for that is just to help it make sure it's doing an even cooking. Um, so that's really important when you have these basket air fryers. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn this on. It's already at 375 and this is my time. And I'm just gonna make it go down to 10 minutes. And then all you do is it automatically starts. So it should start, so there we go. So it's really not, I don't know if you can hear that or not. So it's not, this is actually not as loud as some of the other ones. Um, but anyways, so, so after five minutes, there'll be an alert on here that will say, visually say shake, and then obviously you know if it beeps, you're supposed to shake it. So all you would do is you, you would just stop that. You would just take it up and then you would put it back and then it would finish cooking. So let's see. So someone asked, can we use the frozen Brussels sprouts or would you need to thaw them first? I believe you can put frozen um, directly in. And I think there's a button that it automatically will de-thaw it and then cook it. Um, but you definitely can use the frozen. And is it good to use a liner or is that just an added expense? You can use a liner, but I don't think it's absolutely um, necessary. So what is the minimum size of fryer you would recommend um, in quarts? So I think there's one that comes in, I th think it's like a one, two, three, and four quart. Um, so there's, so I guess the question is the minimum size of fryer you would recommend for kind of what kind of food? Maybe you can um, put your answer in, um, in the chat. As someone said, can't hear it. You know, when someone says a liner does help with cleanup, that's very true. That would help with cleanup. I also should mention with the cleanup, it's not too hard to do either. Um, so normally I just do soap and water, um, soap and water for this drawer. And then the inside basket, I will, you can put it in the dishwasher, which is nice. But every, every type of air fryer is a little bit different. So someone says, doesn't a liner block the airflow? So it, it might block the airflow a little bit. I wouldn't recommend doing like a whole liner, um, you know, over everything. But I think if you just put a little bit of a liner on the bottom, that's fine. But that's a good question. Um, and someone said they have a two quart air fryer for two people. So that's, I think that's a good, a good size for the two people. So what brand mine is, um, is a Power XL Vortex. Um, and I just picked this up at Target, um, which is nice. Okay, so like I said, uh, before class, I did already air fry one bag. So you can see that's what they look like. They have a really nice uh, browning to them and a really nice crunch, um, which is, of course, it's gonna taste really tasty. It really brings out that sweetness to it. So the only other thing that this recipe calls for is a little bit of lemon juice. You can also, if you want to add um, a little bit of butter and lemon, you can do that. Um, but for this recipe, I like to just squeeze on uh, just a little bit of lemon. And then another ingredient that I like is just a little bit of Parmesan cheese. I think this always tastes really good with our Brussels sprouts as well. Again, Parmesan cheese is not in the recipe. It's just something that I recently have been putting on it because I think it's really good. Oh, someone said, I think we aren't hearing your air fryer because Zoom cancels out the appliance noise. I think you're right about that. Um, but I think this is more of a quiet variety, um, just so if anybody is uh, curious about that. Okay. Okay, so what I did is I just added um, a little bit of lemon juice and Parmesan cheese. But again, if you want to add even a little bit of butter for um, if you want to add a little bit of more fat, that's fine too. But um, this is our final product then. So these are our air fried Brussels sprouts. And again, Brussels sprouts are not just the only thing that you can air fry as a vegetable. Um, there's just a lot that you can, a lot that you can do. But again, this is, Brussels sprouts are one of my favorites. So definitely, definitely give it a try uh, with the recipe. And I will send out, send out the recipes um, that we mentioned today.